Lord, anoint the service in Jesus' name. Lord, bless our pastor as he brings forth the gospel of Jesus Christ that our hearts will receive it. In Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Lord. We appreciate you. And we thank you for this day. This is the day you have been here. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, we thank you for peace, joy. Hallelujah. We thank you for love. We thank you for the fruit of the Spirit. Temperance, meekness. Hallelujah. Faith. God, hallelujah, be glorified your name, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Son of God is lifted high.
God with our service. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, everybody. Good to see everybody here Sunday morning. Glory to God in this place. Hallelujah. First lady, good to see you. Praise the Lord. Pastor, amen, amen, and all the ministers in the house of God. You in the right place at the right time. Glory to God. I'm, I got an expectation. How about you? Anybody got an expectation for God to do great things in our lives the rest of this year? My God, my God. I got something I can share with you, but I'm going to hold on to it for just a little while. Because until it's released, I want to be obedient. It's time to pray. The Bible says where there are two or three are gathered in my name. He said, there am I in the midst. We got more than two or three people here in this house this morning. So we're expecting God to move in your lives, in my life, in our family's lives, in our friends' lives, and in this city, in this state, in this nation, and around the world. He's not just local. Hallelujah. Jehovah Shammah is everywhere. Hallelujah. At the same time, he's omnipresent in China. He's there in Korea. He's in Russia. He's in Australia. He's in Africa. Hallelujah. His presence is in the UK. Hallelujah. He's everywhere at the same time. So while we're praying, there's somebody praying all the way over there. Hallelujah. In Fiji, probably at this time. We don't even know about it. But we're going to come on one accord today on this morning. While I'm praying for you, I want you to be praying along with me. Hallelujah, while we go before the throne of grace and bless his holy name, because he's so wonderful. Hallelujah. Glory to God. With every head bowed and every eye closed. Thank you, Jesus. First and foremost, God, all we want to do is we just want to tell you how much we love you this morning. God, we love you so much. Because you've been so good to us. God, 
we just thank you, God, on this wonderful Sunday morning, God, that you have allowed us and ordered our steps into the house of God. And we're not going to take this day lightly, God, but we're going to give you what you deserve. And you deserve all the glory. You deserve all the praise. You deserve our best worship this morning, God. You deserve it, God, because, God, you are God Almighty, our El Shaddai. You are more than enough, Jesus. God, you thank you for being our Jehovah Shalom all week long. You've been our peace all week, God. We thank you, God, for opening up doors, God, that men shut. And God, we thank you for closing doors, hallelujah, that needed to be shut and open, Father, in our lives throughout this week and throughout this month. God, we thank you for taking care, hallelujah, of our loved ones and our family members, sustaining us and God, providing for us, Jehovah Jireh. You have been providing since the day we were born and you're still providing, God, each and every day of the week, Father. We don't want to take you for granted, Father. Father, for things that God, and just for the air that we breathe, Father. We just want to say thank you for the air we breathe, Father. Father, somebody in the other parts of the world are suffering, but God, we got a lot to be thankful for. We are so blessed and highly favored, Father, that God, we thank you for the death and burial of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for sending your comforter, the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah, who helps us, who leads us, and guides us, who empowers us. Hallelujah, who keeps us going every day of the week, Father. Hallelujah, whether we're up, the Holy Spirit is keeping us. Whether we're down, the Holy Spirit keeps us. Hallelujah, whether we're grieving, the Holy Spirit keeps us. Whether we're happy, whether we're sad, the Holy Spirit keeps us. And we thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost, God. God, we ask you today, let the anointing of the Holy Spirit move throughout every pew, Father. Touch your people today, God. Heal today in the name of Jesus. Deliver in the name of Jesus. Save somebody today, Father. Father, from out of the muck and the miry clay, bring them out of the darkness into your wonderful, marvelous light. Father, we thank you, God, for this church. We thank you for greater Jesus tabernacle, Father. We thank you for how you've been blessing this church, Father. How you've been blessing the pastor and the bishop and the first lady and every member of this church, Father. Hallelujah. We thank you for how you're blessing the musicians, Father. Hallelujah. The psalmist, the praise and worship team, Father. So, Father, as we get ready today, hallelujah, to do what you have put inside of us and give it back to you out of our belly, Father. Let it flow like a living water, Father. Let the living water flow, Father. Hallelujah, let pour out your spirit, Father, upon all flesh today. Somebody need their eyes open today in the spirit of the living God. Somebody need their ears open today in the spirit of the living God. We're praying for transformation and change today, Father. Don't let us leave here the same as we came in today, Father. Father, we thank you right now for those new babies in Christ, God. Somebody needs to understand, Father, the more things that they do for you, Jesus, every time they seek you first in your kingdom, you're going to continue adding more to their lives. So, Father, we pray that you increase their hunger, increase their thirst, Father. Keep them coming back to the house of God in the mighty name of Jesus. Remember Raina, Lord. I heard Raina's name called out, Father. Touch Raina right now, wherever Raina is, Father. God, from the crown of her head, to the soles of our feet, Father. Let the blood of Jesus Christ, Father, and the power of the anointed, Father, that you have put in her life, Father. Do what only you can do, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Remember Elder Hood, Father, as he's preaching the word, Father, over there at New Vision Church, Father. Father, bless those people, Father, as you speak to them today. In the mighty name of Jesus. And don't forget our pastor, Father, as he preaches the word, Father. Hallelujah, the unadulterated, Father. Word of God, Father. Let the word of God prick our hearts, Father. Let it challenge us, God. Hallelujah, let us be convicted. Hallelujah, and changed for your glory. And Father, we thank you right now for this city of St. Joseph, Missouri. We pray for peace over the land. There's shooting going on all around in the nation, Father. People are losing their lives, Father. Hallelujah, Father, but God, we thank you. You know the end from the beginning, Father. You are the beginning and the end, and the first and the last, Father. You knew what was going to take place, Father. All the way over there, Father, where those people were shot up, Father. So, Father, we pray for peace for those families, Father, where the families lost a loved one, Father. We pray for those that are bereaving, Father, those that are in hospitals, Father. We pray for those that are in nursing homes, Father, in jail cells, Father. And we continue to pray it over, Father. And we plead the blood all over our universities, Father, all over the colleges.
did in high schools and middle schools and elementary, Father. Remember the faculty and teachers, God. Remember the protective here in St. Joseph, Missouri and around the world, Father. We thank you for your global love, Father. You got global love, Father. Your global love covers a multitude of sins. So we thank you for your global love, Father. You are covered in keeping God. So let your love, Father, continue, God. Hallelujah to cast out. Hallelujah all the fear. Hallelujah your perfect love. Hallelujah that cast out all fear. Hallelujah let it rain over us, God. Let your love, Father, be shed abroad from our heart, Father, by the ways of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, and we give you all the praise today for who you are in our lives, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody put your hands and give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Hallelujah.
they pray for you right there. Somebody say, right there. Right there. Right there, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. She likes to get that offering moving. Amen. Is she moving too fast for me sometimes? Moving too. She want to keep things going. Amen. Amen. That's, that's wisdom. But whatever God has put on your heart to bring, bring this morning, bring your time and offering it to the storehouse. There'll be meat. Does anybody feel like blessing God this morning? We haven't taken up two offerings in a long time, but you got a chance to bless God already. I, maybe God wants you to bless God a little bit more this morning. Amen. Whatever's on your heart will give you a few more minutes to give to the kingdom of God. You can't beat God giving. You can't beat him giving. And he loves when you cheerful. Amen. I'm so happy to give because if he wouldn't have blessed me with the little gifts and talents that I have, I couldn't make any money. Amen. I, I seen a man the other day, a young man, making $10 million on YouTube. Amen. Doing nothing. <laughs> but he got talent to produce. <laughs> Amen. But God's given us talent. And Amen. He reigns on the just and the unjust. Amen. But God has blessed us. You can't beat him giving. And when he blesses you, we give back to him. Amen. Amen. Anybody else want to give from their heart? Give in a heart. Jesus said, give and I'll give it back to you. Just like that. He said, give and I'll give back to you. He said, give and I'll give it back to you. He said, press down. Shake it together.
Lord, that your work might be done. In Jesus' name, I pray a blessing on your people right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Minister Lobster retires. She's going to bring her testimony. And I wish Henry, Brother Henry was here. I talked with him Friday. And I'll cut up a little bit. I don't mind making fun of myself. Henry said, like he was real serious, but then we got to laugh and he was playing. He said, don't you ever, 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 ever again say I'm ready to quit. Say we're going to quit. And I thought he meant, don't say you're going to quit on God or you're going to quit on preaching. You know how we use words. And he said, because then you get to preaching another, <laughs> another 30 minutes. He said, don't ever do that. <laughs> I got where he was coming from. We had a good laugh. I think a little bit of him was serious. He don't like to be psyched out. Amen. So. <laughs> Amen. But he'll tell you once the spirit, amen, gets a hold of you. Sometimes you find yourself in a place longer than you intended to be. But I wish she was here this morning. Let's try to get you out early. Amen. Put your hands together for Minister Luxury Time. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. All right. So we are a church of all nations. At Greater Jesus Tabernacle, we are a Bible-believing body of Christ. Our vision is to compel all nations with the love and the spirit of Jesus Christ. Our mission is to inform, inspire, increase, and innovate through the love of Jesus Christ. Many souls are being saved, lives are being changed, and families are being mended here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle. We believe in the death, the burial, the resurrection, and the life of Jesus. We believe in the repentance baptism of water and of the spirit, and a converted life with holy living. We are currently in our season of the vision of prayer. How many of y'all been praying? Every day. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Reading out of the book of Acts. And so we have Bible study on Wednesday nights. Our morning, Sunday morning worship is at 10 a.m., and just some questions for you to think about going through this week. Who are you talking to and who are you witnessing to? Amen. Everybody say, who are you talking to? Who are you witnessing to? Now look at somebody and say, who am I talking to? Who am I witnessing to? Did you witness to somebody? <laughs> <laughs> amen, amen. I just wanted to also just give just a little brief statement, testimony here. Um, but I was just thinking this week, this month I have been at Greater Jesus Tabernacle for 20 years. I know I don't look like it, but it's, you know, I've been here for 20, 20 years, which is crazy, right? Let's hack my life <laughs> that I've been here and just thinking about that throughout this week, the scriptures, they talk about how God plants your feet where you're supposed to be. And I remember when I graduated high school and I grew up in Kansas City and attended Victorious Life and Bishop Talbert, every time I would come back home for spring break or whatever breaks we had, he'd be like, did you go to Jesus Tabernacle? And I'd be like, no, not yet. <laughs> I went to, you know, try out a few other churches, and every time I come home, he asked me the same thing. And then one summer, he was like, you need to go to Jesus Tabernacle. That's where you're supposed to be. And I was like, okay, okay. <laughs> so then I came and started coming, and I was like, this is it. Like, this, is, this is where I feel home. This is where that God planted me to be. And then being under the leadership of Bishop Talbert and our Bishop Foster and the late uh, Cosetta Foster, and it was, you know, that transition into cultivating your relationship in your adulthood versus your teenagehood, like that was a lot. <laughs> and they poured and inputted into me a lot to help me um, be where I am today with my spiritual walk with God and now being under leadership of Pastor Jimmy and First Lady Roberta, like it is so 
um, just affirming to know that God already had a plan and a purpose. Even when I was like, you know, it's college, you know, I didn't do what I wanted to. I wasn't wild or nothing, but just, you know, just living life, trying to live it up. But God said, no, you, I got a plan. I got a purpose for you to be here. And I'm, my personality is a worker type of a personality. So being able to have the trust and the faith in the leaders here for God to move through me to work and do what I need to do for the upbuilding of his kingdom is something to be said for. A lot of people will church hop and go here and go there and, and got that, but I thank God that my feet has been planted in this ministry for 20 years, planted here in this building for 20 years, even through my ups and my downs, my highs, my lows, God has still been there. God has still let me be able to call on my leaders and ask for advice or just call and vent or whatever I need to do. But I thank God for my feet being planted. You know, the scripture says like my feet are planted, you know, one way, this way, that way. But I thank God that my feet have been planted. And it's something about when you find your home where you're supposed to be at. They say home is where the heart is. My heart is here at Greater Jesus Tabernacle. And so I thank God for planting my feet being here and being under this ministry and for all the relationships and friendships and things that I've made and my children growing up and in this church too as well. And so that was just my little testimony that I just thank God for being here. Like there's, this is where God wanted me to be. <laughs> Amen. Everybody stand to your feet and give her a hand clap for planting her, for God planting her. Amen. God is good. So that means Jeremiah is he before you or after you? Amen. Before you. Amen. And we, he had to come give his testimony sometime. Amen. And we don't know his years because he's not here right now. But <laughs> Put your hands together again and say thank you Lord for ministering through Lashley Ties and we honor her husband Jeremiah Ties. You may be seated. Turn with me in your Bibles to uh, turn with me in your Bibles to Mark, the book of Mark, in chapter 7. When you have it, rise to your feet if you can, and we will uh, then uh, read verse 31 all the way up through 37 or so. Hallelujah. Isn't God good this morning? I'm Pastor Jimmy Foster, James Foster the third. It's good to see my sister in here, Sister Angela. God bless you. Sister Delilah, good to see you. Good to see you, Brother Ezekiel. Amen. Everyone that I haven't seen in a while, good to see you back, Sister. God is good. All right, let's go. Somebody said, let's go. Word, let's go. Amen. Mark 7. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon, he came unto the Sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put his hand upon him. Excuse me. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers unto his ears. And he spit and touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said unto him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And straightway his ears was open and the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spake plain. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much, the more a great deal they published it. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He hath done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Amen. Repeat after me. Ears be open. Ears and heart be open. Epaphra. Lord Jesus. 
Jesus, we thank you. Thank you for this great day of worship. We thank you for taking us, bringing us through the heat, bringing us through the week. We thank you for bringing us through, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 49 and a half years of ministry. Thank you, Lord, for carrying us. Or you put us on your back and carry us. Lord, we ask, Lord, that you keep giving us your anointing. Lord, keep blessing us. Hallelujah. Keep endowing us with the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Empower us to go and heal. Go and be healed. Go and sin no more. Empower us to go and know that you sent us in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Come, heal the brokenhearted, Lord. Mend the brokenhearted. Mend lives. Save souls. Through this work this morning, your anointing, continue, Lord, to destroy the yoke in Jesus' name. There's no bondage in the kingdom. There's no need unmet in this house, your house, hallelujah. Thank you, all we have to do is ask and we shall receive. Seek and we shall find and we're gonna knock this morning and the doors of heaven will be open. In the name of Jesus, uh, we pray that our ears be open and changed in Jesus' name. We thank you for this day. Somebody said in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you. Put your hands together for Sister Roberta Foster, First Lady. Roberta Foster. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If I can, uh, I'll tell a little bit of business, but I don't tell enough to embarrass nobody. I think I thank God for Sister Patrice. Put your hands together for her and all she does. She told Roberta, she said, you know, a while ago, maybe a year ago or so, she said, you know, uh, some of your people got it wrong. And she said, they got it wrong. They're saying, Roberta. They're saying, Sister Roberta. It's First Lady. Amen. <laughs> God bless you, Sister Patrice. And, and, you know, it takes everyone, takes a village to put the house in order. And she's saying, just respect the woman of God. Amen. Amen. I'm all right. I'm not as formal as some, kind of like my mother, my father. You call me Jimmy. As long as we're respecting the house of God, you know, as long as you have respect for the people of God. Amen. But I thank God for the music ministry. Give them a hand clap. Amen. God gave you brother. Good one. A great blessing. God is good. Amen. Amen. But in the book of Mark, we're talking about the ears. We've been talking about the blessings that Psalm 37 accounted for, blessings. Miracles, to be exact, of God, of Jesus on earth. Well, Psalm 37 miracles accounted for. There was even more, and 37 was accounted for in the New Testament. That's in the New Testament. Amen. We thank God. So we are doing a great job. I'm going to do even better in this church of articulating the benefits of serving God and the benefits of coming to this church. Amen. Amen. The increase, the benefits, the growth, purpose. Amen. God is good. So we've been talking about the, the miracles of Jesus and benefits and and we're going to answer some questions along the way. In Bible class, we'll answer some more questions such as what is love and what is hate? What is peace and what is war? Wasn't that a great uh, time last week talking about war and peace? God is good. And uh, somebody came up to the altar and they said, I want, I want a prayer for that peace that he was preaching about. I said, me too. Amen. Amen. And when we got to believe that the peace of God really passes all understanding and it'll keep us and guide us and what is peace and war what is strength what is weakness what is pain what is pleasure who is god who is jesus who is lord who is a, what is an idol who is god who is the devil then we'll be answering these questions from different angles dealing with the miracles of god and we're going to be very direct about the benefits again 
Look at somebody and say, I get a benefit from serving God. I get a benefit from coming into this house. I, I gain. Hey, man, do you believe you can? Put your hands together and for the gain that God has put on you. Sister Delilah, God has blessed you several days. But then there's a gain of seeking him, isn't it? Amen. He'll keep us. Amen. So we're praying for strength, growth. If you want strength and growth in your life, empowerment, creativity, innovation, serve God. But Bishop Johnny James, Elder Johnny James said, worship God, serve Jesus. Amen. He'll never leave you. He'll never leave you uh, uncomforted. He'll, he'll never, amen, uh, leave you with, without a gain of knowledge, a gain of comfort, a gain of more pleasure spiritually. Hallelujah. Psalms 103 says, Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Amen. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all all, somebody said all his benefits. Amen. We'll, we'll go over that uh, some more. But the benefits is an advantage. You have an advantage over the devil. It's a personal gain. Corporately, as a body of Christ, we gain. But the benefit is you've got an advantage. Your personal, spiritual self. Amen. You have to dwell in the secret place of the most high, though. We're talking about a prayerful life, a life of relationship with Jesus. You have to dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and you get to abide under the A benefit, I get to rest, live, abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes we feel so alone, don't we? Sometimes we feel so destitute, like we don't have anything. That's just how you feel sometimes. Sometimes you feel down. And the Bible in Psalms says, forget not his benefit. So I speak to you that are downtrodden, those that are heavy burdened, those that are heavy laden. And I say, forget not his benefits. I remind myself right now of how Paul talked to the churches. Do you not know that you've got benefits in the Lord? And benefits, hallelujah. Bishop Tober said, you get some benefits by going to Greater Jesus Tabernacle, didn't he? Hey, Amen. 20 years later, God is so good. Give him another hand clap for what he's done. I've received benefits from her benefiting from serving God even at this church. So I love it because the word that was used was if I, if I thought. It's hard to say. E P H P H A T H A. That is be opened. Ephatha. Be open. Jesus said, be opened. Wow. Straightways, his ears were open. He did something a little bit different, a little bit weird to man. He took him aside. This man was deaf, impediment of speech. And he grabbed him put his hand on him and took him aside from the multitude. A bishop told me you have to be free from to be free for. God, Jesus had to sometimes get away from the disciples because they did not want him to bless people. They did not want him to, to, to suffer the little kids under him. So sometimes he had to get away. Sometimes he had to separate himself in belief, in practice, or in location. He had to separate himself so that he could be a blessing to people. And he took the deaf man aside. Imagine Jesus taking you. You've got a need. You might not be deaf, but there's some things that you just can't hear. I submit to you there's some things in your life mama told you, daddy told you, your auntie, your Bible told you, but you just will not hear. You've got to get away and steal away, Mother Hughes. With Jesus, and he take you aside. He took the man aside and got him away from people that don't believe. God bless you all. Give them a hand clap. Baptize in Jesus' name. Oh, God. never would have made it 
without Jesus, but you made it. God bless you. You're talking about the man that Jesus took from the multitude. You got to get away from unbelief. You got to get away sometimes from spirits that think you can't. They call it pessimism. Not optimism, but pessimism. You have to get away from even optimistic people that believe in another type of way. You got to get away from the multitude. It's amazing that we serve Jesus and he doesn't need all of our friends and enemies around to bless us, to heal us. This is the kind of God we serve. Amen. The man told me, he said, y'all baptized in Jesus' name, y'all believe in one God. He said, I can go with you on that, but doesn't it bother you that most people don't believe like you believe? I said, Jesus never needed most people. Amen. He just needs you to believe. He just needs you to hear. So open your ears. Open my ears, Jesus, this morning. Open my ears. I told you before when I started preaching years ago, before I started preaching, I was naive enough to believe after a good sermon or a great sermon, everybody in the camp that knew Jesus was going to go away, made whole, and be sin-free at least for a year. That's what I thought. That's what I thought, Bishop. Well, I got a rude awakening, amen, because uh, most people can't articulate back what I said. They say a little bit of it, but sometimes I'm like, did I even say that? Amen. And I have to think about me. How many good sermons did I hear? And I decided to go a different path as soon as I got out the church door. Is there anybody realistic and real in here? As soon as you stepped out, as a matter of fact, when you got saved, it was hard for you to walk away from sin because sin still had you bound. Love lifted you, but sin still was tugging at you. And we prayed for God to release us. He pulled him away from the multitude. He put his hands, fingers in his ears. Probably was looking at him straight. Put his, this is what Jesus did to the, the deaf man, the man that had a speech impediment. He put his fingers in his ear. And he touched his tongue. But he spit first. Fingers in his ear. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. Look up to heaven. Oh, man. It's, it's better than illustration, just putting yourself in Jesus' shoes. Go on, look up to heaven. Amen. Because you feel what Jesus was feeling. He looked up. He touched his tongue. Looked up to heaven, sighed, and said unto him, If that fire that is be opened, be open. His ears was open. The string of his tongue was loose. And he spake plain. Hallelujah. When Jesus heals you, when he brings you to repentance, when he brings you to wholeness, to completeness, hallelujah, you speak plain. The Bible says, let your yeas be yea, and let your nays be nay. You're not wavering in your faith. You're not wavering in your belief. Remember Jesus healed the man that couldn't see. And, uh, and then there's a, one of those healings, the man said, I don't know uh, who you want, Sadducees and Pharisees. I don't know who you want to put the credit to, but I know I made whole 100%. Jesus fixed me. Hallelujah. And he said, be open. He charged them, don't tell nobody. Be open. Ears be open. So in Mark 7, if we back up, we'll get a little explanation of how Jesus does things. He said, there is nothing, Mark 7 and 15, he said, there is nothing from without a man that enter into him that can defile him. But the things which come out of him, those are they that defile the man. If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Somebody look at somebody and say, let me hear. Let me hear. Let me hear. The Bible says, if any man come, come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow me. Let me live for Jesus. 
he entered into the house from the people. His disciple asked him concerning the parable. So I think it's very interesting that he's teaching on hearing. And he's teaching on it right before he heals. Amen. I think it's very interesting that he's teaching on him being bread of heaven, bread of life, right before he feeds uh, the multitude with two fish, five loaves of bread that he doubles, triples, quadruples, and keeps turning it over 10, 20 times. I think it's very interesting when he meets the woman at the well and he said, you need my water that you never be thirsty again. Hallelujah. I think it's very interesting when Jesus heals the blind man. He says, I'm the light of the world when he does it for you directly, physically. When he does a miracle for you, he's trying to show you who he is eternally. He's trying to show you his nature. He's trying to show you how he loves you. You remember I hate God. He's a giving God. He, he loves in a giving way. It's not just agape unconditionally, but it's coupled together with a hate very interesting. He just doesn't want to do it for you, but he wants you to receive and hear of your love, hear of his love, hear of his completeness, hear of his abundance. Has it ever occurred to you, we got one miracle we might need, or one blessing that we're praying and believing God so mightily and heavily for, and we don't know if we're going to get it? Hallelujah. And he's telling them that I'm the God of hearing. I'm the God of water. I'm the God of abundant life. You want to go life extended. You don't want to die, but he is the life giver that breathed life into man's nostrils. He is the blessing. He is the giver, and he gives himself, and when he does it, hallelujah, when he gives himself, you cannot be not healed. You must be made whole when he blesses you when he heals you, he's putting himself on the inside of you. Hallelujah. He grabbed the man's ears, put his fingers in the man's ears, spit on his finger, touched his tongue, and the man could not just hear, but is connected to his speech. Utter what you hear. Tell somebody, utter the goodness of Jesus. Utter what you hear. Utter what you hear. He went on to say, before he healed the man, in verse 21, he said, From within, out of the heart of man, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these things come from within the defile and defile a man. And from thence he arose and went unto the borders of Tyre and Sidon. And then he goes on to heal uh, a woman possessed and then the man that couldn't hear. But he's talking about what comes out. He said, and then the Bible does say out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He's talking about what comes out that defiles because it tells on us. It tells how evil we are. This is why the man couldn't talk and he was just there to show the greatness of Jesus. He was just there to prove who he was. This is why he put something else on the inside of him that could come out. He put his fingers in his ears and he put his spit on the man's tongue on the inside of him just so the blessing can come out, could come out and he wouldn't be defiled by not being able to speak. But, oh, blessings come out when God puts something on the inside of you. You can't help but bless his kingdom. You can't help but be a blessing. Say, put it on the inside of me, God. I won't keep it from your people. Put it on the inside of me, God. Hallelujah. You've anointed me, and you've given me the talent. You've given me the gift. To be a blessing. Give me your blessing so that I can get it out and it can bless everyone. Matthew 11 and 15 said, He that has ears to hear, touch your ears. Touch your ears. 
You got ears to hear? Let them hear. Deuteronomy 6 and 4 says, Here, touch your ear again. God gave it to you. You might even need a hearing aid, but you can hear me a little bit. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. He didn't say write it down. He didn't say just think about it. He said, hear it. Put it on the inside of you. I'm going to bless this man thousand years later that he can hear. But right now, hear, O Israel, it's me that's going to come down through the generations. Hear, O Israel, it's me that's going to be your master. Hear when I come and start giving you miracles and come and put on clothes and come and start walking the earth to be a blessing. Know that I'm one God. Know that I'm with you. Hear, O Israel, when man takes my life just because I lay it down, know that I'm giving you power in 2023. Hear, O Israel, my one God has empowered me and endowed me with the blessing of being able to communicate the gospel, communicate his love, communicate Romans 10. And 17 says, so then, faith cometh by hearing. So then, faith cometh by You can't get faith if you can't hear it. Amen. I'm not messing with the person that can't hear and that does sign language. That's a form of hearing for them. Until God bless them with hearing. But it says, faith come by hearing. When the gospel comes on and, and when the preacher starts preaching and when somebody wants to talk about Jesus, we decide that it's not worth our time. That's why we don't have enough faith. That's why we're weary. That's why we're weary in well-doing. That's why, hallelujah, that, uh, that we walk through the valley and shadow of death. And we fear because you won't hear and develop your faith that God wants to put on the inside of you with his saliva. Lord, spit on me spiritually that I can open up my mouth and you'll feel it. Hey, Pastor, open your ears that God wants to bring you out of bondage. Open your ears. He wants to heal you. He wants to hear you. He of unbelief. Open your ears, he that has a spirit to hear. Let him hear. Let me hear. Lord, I want to hear. And I can't hear, so bless my spirit. It's not your ears that are blocking you. It's your spirit. Your, your spirit's in bondage. Your spirit's walking in idolatry. Your spirit's walking in lasciviousness. Our spirit's walking in our life of old. But if you have the spirit of God, you got to hear God just to receive his spirit. So let me hear what you're saying to me, Lord. It was a bad time when Saul could not get to God anymore. And he had to go try to find the soothsayer. And he had to go try to find Samuel. It was a dangerous thing when God wouldn't talk to him anymore. Lord, don't stop talking to me. When he stops talking to you, oh, hallelujah, the anointing is taken from you. But David said, don't take your anointing from me, Lord. Don't take it. They sing that song so well. Don't take it from me, Lord. I want your spirit. I want to hear. I, I've been making my decisions of my own choice, and it hasn't worked out. But I've got a spirit to hear what you're saying to me, Lord. And so uh, in Revelations 3 and 10, it reiterates it some more. It says, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the spirit saith to the churches, the seven churches of Asia Minor. Jesus wasn't walking the earth. Jesus, his spirit was talking to John on the island of Patmos, the owl. And he had something to say for the seven churches of Asia Minor. The, the, the spirit wants to talk to you, and you haven't always been perfect. You might not be perfect right now, but if you know Jesus, you got a spirit to hear. Jesus. David was in a bad way. 
And so Nathan had to come to him with prophecy. He had a backslidden state on him, but he still had the right spirit of God somewhere on the inside of him. God will not put a spirit on a devil or a demon. So when he speaks to you, when he touches you on the inside, out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. When he touches you, that means he wakes it up what's already there that he knows he can wake up. He's blessing you with his eternal life and his abundant spirit that already is there, but you just have to wake it up. Stir up the gift, the Bible says. The anointing is here on the inside of you. Stir up the gift. Don't worry. Don't wonder. Don't fear what you can't do. But go to the Lord in prayer and say, I heard the word of the Lord and said, faith come by hearing. And say, faith come by hearing. Without faith is impossible to please him. I heard Yesterday, I was trying to get something done with these old crazy computers, and I just could not get anywhere. I just couldn't get anywhere, and I just kept working. And after a while, I just had to say, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus over this computer. Jesus over this iPad. Jesus, and then God spoke to me and said, no, Jesus over your mind. We talk about, and I preach about, God covering you. Not having the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. But the devil will t attack your mind if you act like you didn't hear it yourself. So I said, Jesus, you come to protect my mind. No matter whether I get this done today or next week, you want my mind right. We can't stop, start fussing and cussing and getting mad. But we can just say, I got the mind of Jesus throughout all turmoil. I heard your word. You don't have a daddy if you ain't if you don't do what he said to do. But if my daddy said that we shall be overcomers. We shall be more than conquerors. I heard you, Jesus. You got to start warring in the spirit realm. Like I said last week, we walk in the flesh, but we don't war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare. We at war in this peaceful time, but we still at war, but we got God's peace. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God, through the pulling down of the stronghold. So 1 Corinthians 14, 31 says, for ye may all prophesy one by one that all may learn and all may be comforted. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. For God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of confusion, but of peace. Hallelujah. And in, as in all churches of the saints, and that spirit hit me because we've been talking about peace and, 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 and peace of God, how he keeps you in the middle of the war because he's fighting your battles. But it said, God, we stop right there, Pentecostal church and Baptist church and whatever we are, Lutheran church. And we say, God is not the author of confusion. But the rest of it says, but of peace. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. He's the author of peace. He didn't write down confusion in your saved life. He didn't write down unbelief, but he authored it. He scripted peace because he is the prince of peace. And he's peace. And what happens when things are peaceful? The storms stop making noise. And you can hear the word of the Lord because you don't have to interpret confusion in your life. You can hear the word of faith, the word of mighty. You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost comes. You can, re you can hear and download peace because when Jesus talks, confusion stops it. All the noise stops it. All the tinkling brasses stop. Matter of fact, we're talking about love too. Charity is the greatest of all. If you don't have charity, it's 
said in your tongues, your prophecy, your praise, your words of worship is just a sound of tinkling brass. But I don't want to just make a sound. I want the ears of Jesus and the ears of peace that passes all understanding. Give God some praise if the noise of the devil can't overtake you. Give God some praise when you make noise in the kingdom of heaven. It's a peaceful sound. Give them a praise when you make noise in this apostolic church. It's the sound of peace and the devil has to stop and shut up in his tracks. But God, I hear you clearly. It's not the fact that there's too much devil going on. There's too much noise going on in your life uh, that, that keeps you from the voice of God. It's you choose to listen to the noise around you. You choose to let it drive you. You choose, we choose sometimes to run to what we hear and have itching ears instead of running to the throne of grace when you start listening to his plan and listening to his prophecy over your life you receive purpose that you need when you start listening to what he said and what your purpose is you start turning other things off around you matter of fact when God talk, talks other things stop talking around you because they have to be still when God moves. I told you energy was a thing last weekend. And we talk about people's positive and negative energy. Hallelujah. But when God's moving, that's the positive spirit that you need that will postpone negative appointments and postpone negative reactions and postpone and stop and remove all of the tickling brasses and impute love. When love moves around you, Lord, he gets the most out of your praise. When love moves from within, he gets the most out of your worship. Lord, move love in me. I don't want to hear or listen to the devil, but move in me, oh, heavenly Father, my master. He said, Jesus said, my father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Your noise, your sound, your hearing be done. Your will in my life. I'm not listening to things that won't get it done anymore. I'm going to stand on this word. He is the rock and the solid rock I stand. I'm going to stand on his trust. I'm going to stand on his faith. I'm going to stand on your Lord. My ears are the spirit of God. Hallelujah. Somebody can, might be able maybe just to say hallelujah in here if you're blessed to be able to hear that Jesus is real. And somebody might be able to say thank you Jesus. I thank God that I can hear of your love. Thank you, Jesus. I won't turn around after 20 years of serving him at Greater Jesus Tabernacle. Sister Lashari, after 10 years of serving him, I won't turn back like the song we used to sing. I won't turn back. I've heard God's vision for my life, and it shall be done. Give him some glory if his vision sounds real good. Hallelujah. Give him some glory if you can hear plain and clear and speak plainly with the spirit of the Lord like Jesus had the man speak plainly. Oh, hallelujah. I give you some glory, Lord. It sounds good to me when you sacrifice unto the Lord in the old days, in the Old Testament, it's a sweet smelling savor, a savor to God. Amen. You know we can affect God's senses if he can smell because he's pleased. He can hear your praise. And he inhabits the praises of his people. And he's happy because, hallelujah, my soul cries out to the Lord. I'm done with this sermon. I'm done preaching long sermons. We're just going to
preach good spiritual sermons that the Lord gives us. Amen. Somebody said, I hear you loud and clear, Lord, and I will do your will in the name of Jesus. I make a joyful noise to you, Lord, because you open. Ephatha means be open. And you know where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. There's freedom. When Jesus touches you, you're open to do his will. You're open to love harder. Oh, not that way you used to love, but you're open to love in a pure manner. You're open, you're open, you're open to help somebody. If I saw, open me up to your will, Lord. Give me the freedom and the liberty of your anointing. And I want to bless somebody. Your life has to turn around. Don't you think the deaf man's life was changed? It was turned around. And Jesus said, uh, be open. Be open. The simple message to you this morning is to Jesus come so you can hear. You can hear what he's telling you. He come to bless you. Bless you with his word. His word have uh, I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Amen. The saint was in the beginning with God. In him was life. And life was the light of man. Oh, hallelujah. And don't you, aren't you happy that you know who Jesus is? Hey, open your ears. Hear, hear, hear. Your Lord is one in your life. Oh, my goodness. He's, he's personable. He's connecting to you in your life. Hear, hear. You can uh, respond to him when he calls you out of darkness into this marvelous life. And you get to call things that are not as though they already were. When you call it somebody, something has to hear. And I love how the Bible says that the demons tremble at the sound the name of Jesus when well, there's some hearing going on in the kingdom of heaven there's some listening and there's some vibrations that bang up on hearing faculties spiritually and when Jesus is exalted hallelujah we become victorious I wonder for one minute if we can lift up the name of Jesus Amen. Do you got a spirit to hear and utter? When you can utter plainly, that means you can hear plainly. Somebody call on Jesus. The Bible says seek him early that he might be found. Call on the Lord. He'll put the devil in his right place. Call on the Lord in the name of Jesus. Somebody got to hear you calling on the Lord. Call on the Lord. When you call on him, it sets an example. And it sets the atmosphere in the kingdom. Call on the Lord. When you're in the chapel, the angels will help you sing. Call on Jesus. Somebody must be saved. I, I, I just need to sit on down. But for me to feel better. For about 15 seconds, can about 10 people stand to their feet and, and say, I'm going to call on you, Jesus. And look this way and say, I'm going to call on you, Lord. I'm going to begin to call on you, Lord. Remember in Genesis, when Enoch, they, they, they said, man, begin to call on the Lord. Things change on this earth. When you utter his beautiful name, his sweet name, say again, say, Lord, I'm going to continue to call on you. I call on you in thick and in thin. I call on you till you bless me, Lord. I'm calling on you till you anoint me to do the will. I'm calling on you until I don't feel like quitting no more. I'm calling on you, Jesus. Now my faith brings me to your will. Somebody do it just now. Say, Jesus. 
Come on down, come on down, come on down. Let God turn your life around. Let God change you. Let God give you more strength, more power. Sister Roberta, if you can help us sing.
think you're empowered. But at the altar, amen, as God heals and delivers, I still see that there's giants that we're going to have to face. What does it say about giants? No giant. No giant can defeat me. No giant can defeat me. Pray for the giants in our life, the things that we have to face this week. The brother that has to have surgery. I pray that, hallelujah, God, amen, can slay those giants. Amen? Amen. Those giants of doubt. God can slay those. Well, we need faith, don't we? We need faith. Let's pray. And we're dismissed, Lord. We thank you for what you've done this week. We thank you for being God head of our lives. We thank you for being Lord of our life. We make you Lord. Hallelujah. We make you first. Thank you, Lord. We make you priority. Thank you, Lord, for giving us a mind to want to serve you, a mind to want to pray, a mind to want to hear your voice. Oh, Lord Jesus, now everything that we're facing this week, Lord, Lord, help us remember what we heard this morning. Remember that there's really no weapon formed against us that shall prosper. Remember that you're on our side. Remember, Lord, thank you, Lord, that we are victorious and we don't have to fear. That's not your spirit. Your spirit is a sound mind. In the name of Jesus, we walk in protection in this dangerous world, these dangerous streets as the bullets are flying, as the drugs are being popped and shot up, and as the, the alcohol is being poured. Lord, as we leave here, Lord, we come against the spirit of the adversary trying to change our order, trying to change our appointments. But, Lord, we pray that we walk in your light and you'll change our situation. Change us. Help us. Give us strength in the name of Jesus and protection, Lord. And we'll see you all in Jesus' name. And we'll see you all Wednesday night. And we'll be, hallelujah, talk about pain and pleasure. Amen? Pain and pleasure. God is good. Hug somebody. Give somebody uh, an encouraging word as you leave here. That the devil's already defeated and Jesus is exalted. Amen. Thank you, James. And Sister Roberta.